Hello, today I'm going to be making a presentation on the Grenville orogeny. So first off, I wanted to start off with questions, just generalizing what I want to be talking about in this presentation and what you can expect. So questions before going into this that I want to answer is what is the Grenville orogeny? Does the Grenville orogeny only involve convergence cell or genesis? And how many tectonic events were involved in the Grenville orogeny? So there's many different models to talk about for the Grenville orogeny, but we're going to be focusing on specifically the one in the McClellan model. So multiple different uh, papers talk about this, all of the three that we focused on were these three papers. So objectives. So these different objectives that we're going to be looking at, it's the area and overview, geological history, key terms, timeline, tectonic model, localized geology, high pressure belts, and microscope analysis. First, first starting off with the evidence for the Grenville orogeny. So looking at this image, we can see that there's a clear span trend northeast of these high grade metamorphic rocks. This goes from all the way from Texas all the way to eastern Labrador. In these high pressure, uh, high pressure belt, we find different uh, lead isotope values. Specifically in the Adirondacks, when we compare it towards the southern Appalachians, we find different lead isotope values. So these lead isotope values are below the average for crustal growth. Um, showing that it's derived from mantle region uh, depleted in uranium. So we can use this to interpret where the, the initial rock was being fed from. So finally, the different, there's different subsurface structures on the Grenville orogeny, which allow us to show a northwest converging trend. This is primarily due to different shear zones and northwest dipping reflections. So evidence for the Grenville extends uh, at the surface and below with rock types and different geophysical models. So evidence for the geophysical model is seen within seismic data. So if we take uh, the seismic data for, for the region and look at the gravitational uh, constants, we can see that there is a northwest um, thickening in the crust. So you find we have a thickening at this point and then a thinning. So this would be due to a northwest convergence. This seismic data shows the different uh, crust depths and how it is dominated along the border of the convergent zone. Next we can find we have different lithologies at the border of the Grenville front which is the pre the predisposed rock um, as well as the new rock being formed so these are this is the zone between the old and the new rock or along the convergence front or the Grenville front so this is seen through the lithologies so we can see evidence for the Grenville event both within geophysical and physical data on the earth so next an introduction to where the plates came from so the plates originally started, this convergence style or genesis of the Grenville event happened during the formation of Rodinia. So this is, was assembled from 1.3 to 0 0.9 billion years ago. This happened during the collision between Laurentia and Amazonia. So you can see Amazonia has this plate as well as Laurentia has this plate. This was a mountain building event and allowed for the eastern and southern margins of the Laurentian plate to build these one these different metamorphic belts that were formed at around 1.1 billion years ago right here and then we can see these red dots this is indicating volcanism So key terms, so the Grenville orogeny is all of the area, so all of this area that is affected by the Grenville or Genesis 
or the orogenesis that happened primarily from 1.3 to 1.0 billion years ago. Well, the Grenville front right here is the the superior craton on the left side, the west, from the Grenville rocks on the right side or on the east. So this is the, the colliding front of the orogenic uh, event together with the older superior craton. So the next is the Grenville province. So this is the f the different lithologies found within the Grenville event rocks. This is the youngest portion of the Canadian Shield, and this area has undergone no overprinting since the list this last origin, orogeny. Finally, the Adirondacks. So the Adirondacks are the area that's the mountain chain in the southern area near eastern New York. Uh, this area recorded all the orogenic pulses and also has high grade metamorphic rocks. This area had northwest trending high shear zones, which allowed for these different emplacements of these different types of rocks. So as we originally begun speaking at the top at the beginning of this presentation, uh, there's many different models that are discussed in the in the Grenville orogeny. So primarily, they mostly are three based on three different events. So a pr primary origin, a resting period, and a secondary or orogeny. So the area, the one that we're focusing on is the McClellan model. So it starts off with the Elzevirian orogeny, then AMCG magnetism and magnetism, and then finally the Ottawa orogeny. So this is split up into uh, this marker. So the one, two, and three events. So the first one being the Elzevirian. The Elzevirian is, is located within this first model here, which happened around to 1,245 to 1,220 million years ago. This is when there was collision style orogenesis. Um, we're finding we're having different back arcs that are forming these calc alkaline arcs in the Adirondas and the CMB plates. Um, these are allowing for high, different high grade metamorphic rocks that are being deposited before the primary orogenesis of the Ottawaian. So this is allowing for back arcs uh, as well as convergence style orogenesis to occur. Um, these these formed after this uh, event of collision from the Adirondas colliding into the Laurentian plate. We're finding we're having this AMCG magnetism. This was due to the submerging plate, um, the basaltic submerging plate going underneath the Adirondas and feeding um, this magma with these different uh, elements. So this. AMC, AMCG magnetism was caused by a submerging plate underneath, which allowed for these different um, features to appear within, within the plates. And then finally, we're having this final Ottawaian colli collision cell orogenesis, uh, which occurred when the Amazonian uh, large plate collided within the large plate of Laurentia. So this is compressing the Adirondas and the CMB um, rock lithologies and allowing for the largest convergence uh, of the area. So first starting off with the Elzevirian. So the Elzevirian uh, is one of the, is the oldest and therefore it's the hardest to be able to interpret back to the original state. But there's evidence that the Elzevirian started around 1.3 billion years ago. This is due to the uh, there being calc alkaline magmas, which indicate the existence of collisional style margins, which were created uh, in wet ocean trains. So the preservation of these of 1.3 billion year old uh, silimanite gneisses. Uh, and the uh, Ottawaian age gabbros give us proof that there was large-scale deformation which allowed uh, 
events far before the Ottawa and Orogeny. So there was these large style convergence before the Ottawa and Orogeny. So therefore, there must have been two types of events. Uh, of original orogenesis, then a period of quiescence, and then a second larger orogenesis. Thirdly, there's Elzevirian metamorphose tonalite. Uh, this is giving um, with Elzevirian age metamorphic ranks. This gives us two main features of the Elzevirian. First off, there's the calc alkaline magma emplacement, and then second, a high grade metamorphic emplacement. This makes sense because if the magma would have been in place first, followed by a second high metamorphic uh, vent due to the second orogenesis um, or the convergence style from the later Laurentian plate colliding within, uh, or the later Amazonian plate colliding within to the Laurentian plate. So now the tectonics of the Elzebirian orogeny. So this diagram is showing first starting off um, with the two with the model. So this is the oldest, middle, and then the youngest of this diagram. So first, looking at the the CMB. So the CMB CGB stands for Central Nice Belt. As you can see, the central nice belt is on the very far left side of the diagram. So this is the high most metamorphosed, oldest area of the Canadian shield. So as you're seeing, as there's a subducting plate here, we're finding we're getting, uh, so this is the Adirondack arc, and then this was the CMB. So as the Adirondack arc is colliding with the older Laurentian plate, a centralized metamorphic, a metasediment belt is being deposited. So originally it was just a basaltic, then a central metasediment belt between the two, between the Adirondack arc. And then finally, um, we're looking, we, we, now we can see this uh, different convergence style through these different um, swells in the central metasediment belt area. We can see these different convergence style faulting going upwards, and then we can follow the the can the C G B belt, which has been converged back towards the farther left side of the diagram due to the convergence of this Adirondack arc. So describing this uh, through different rock types, we can see that. We're having rocks formed through all different types of this convergence now. First off, we can use tonal-like suites to chemically represent the collision margin of where uh, this began to occur. We know that there is there is this central metasediment belt due to the different rocks that we're finding within the final stage of this Elzevirian orogeny. So next is the AMCG magmatism event. So this happened between 1,500 or 1,150 and 1,125 million years ago. So this is showing different magma suites that occurred due to uh, a coeval um, event that employ imposed both uh, and and northite and granitoids within the crust. So this uh, primarily is shown in the Adirondack Mountains uh, due to the AMCG suite. Um, the anorthosite complexes are thought to be GABA-derived because they were from the upper mantle, while the granitoids were derived from deep crustal sources. So we're finding different types of mantle-derived content here in these types of rocks, so we know they must be coming from deep sources. Now the model of how this is occurring. Uh, so there's new hot stenosphere that's coming through the 
a subducting plate which is allowing for this upswell in AMCG magnetism. This is caused by the ocean basin subducting under the um, Elzevirian Frontenac terrains. Uh, this was past the subduction zone and is no longer present. Due to the relaxation between the Elzevirian and the Ottawaian, there was this influx of hot asthenosphere. This was caused by a crustal rebound which allowed for the deeper mantle to break off and allow for the more viscous mantle to come up towards the surface. Finally, we're looking at the Ottawaian orogeny. So in the Ottawaian, oh, this is the final orogeny that's happening from 1.1 billion to 1, 1 billion years ago. So we're finding portions of all the different phases including the uh, centralized granulite belt um, in this uh, orogeny type. This is due to the cross cutting of all the different orogenies occurring uh, in the same rocks. This is why we keep seeing the same front from northeast to west along the same area. So this is the northwest directed thrusting from the Quebec side. We're finding that there's a reflection of this auto ion orogeny due to the the largest convergence style or genesis between the the large plates of Laurentia and Amazonia. So now the model of how this happened. So as we're having this extremely large continent continent of uh, Amazonia collide into the large continent of Laurentia finding we're having an incredible amount of stress forces which are allowing for shearing and faulting going towards the CMB belt or the central granulite belt and as we're getting more and more pressure there is a build mountain building event that's occurring the crust is swelling up and building an elevation although after a specific amount of force there is collapse this collapse is allowing for the different um, uh, the different rock types to form and swell up into the collapsed area taking the more viscous mantle and moving it up towards the surface. So this idea of collision and collapse is only one of the two possibilities of why there could be magmatic underplaning under the Indian type margin. Um, so looking at what, how and why this sh is true is looking at the para auto aloctinus belt and the allo aloctinus belt. So in the para auto aloctinus belt, we're finding the lowest is the lowest structural unit of the Grenville province. It's sub parallel to the Grenville front, which is along here between the older Superior province and the younger Grenville province, and it has been reworked heavily. In a, uh, reworked extensively, although it has the oldest, most variable Nisic granitoid intrusions. So therefore it's the oldest unit unit and it's sub parallel to the oldest uh, Canadian Shield rocks. So parallel to that we're finding the Loctinus belt, a Loctinus polycyclic belt. This is the far traveled Grenvin Grenvillian technonism. This was present before the pre Elzevirian rock and is comprised of trains that preserved the Paleo Proterozoic to Meso Proterozoic rocks. And then finally, we're looking at the Alloctinus monocyclic belt, which is absent of all pre Elzevirian rock and only is comprised of younger units of 1.3 billion years old. So, therefore, we can see that the oldest units are here and the youngest units are here. Therefore, we know there must have been some convergence style or genesis event. Looking at the high pressure metamorphism event, we're finding these between the uh, the Grenville front and the the older Canadian Shield rocks. This is uh, at the interface of the Paraloctinus and the Allaloct, as well as at the Paraloctinus and Allaloctinus belts. 
it's only restricted to the high strain zones because this, there has to be a high amount of strain for these high pressure rocks to be able to be pushed up into the, the crust. They're variably retrograded down to the from the granulite facies to amphibolite facies. These high pressure rocks uh, had to go through uplift and exhumation uh, and separated by uh, mid crustal relaxation events. Due this and this was the only way that the uh, they could have been exhumed is due to these mid crustal relaxation events. So these high pressure rocks uh, indicate these different uh, re-equilibrium points. So the first one is we're finding relic kyanite, which would form an, a deeper, higher pressure f uh, rock, forming an inner shell of saffron and corundum, uh, and an outer shell of cyclic plagioclase. So therefore it had to go through minimum of two to three uh, different types of uh, re-equilibration. Finally, we're looking at igneous plagioclase. This is completely pseudomorphed by garnet um, because it originally coexisted uh, at a lower pressure and then it was pseudomorphed to a higher pressure or re at a higher pressure and that's why it was consumed by garnet. So the conclusion of this presentation is there was multiple different events uh, in the Grenville orogeny cycle so periods included thrusting, faulting, and metamorphism, and were not continuous. There was times of convergence, and then acquiescence, and a th second period of convergence. The three major events are dictated to be the Elzevirian, which happened between 1,350 to 1,100, then AMCG magmatism, which was 1,180 to 1,130, and finally the Ottawaian, which is 1,130 to 1,030 million years ago. Thank you.